Welcome to the biology department at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Our nearly 30 tenure track faculty and 15 research associates and adjunct faculty work with many of our 900 biology majors to seek answers to some of life's most complex and compelling questions. Come with me on a short journey into the heart of the department to meet some of the extraordinary faculty and students. Here is just a glimpse at the breadth of our research program. Some of our faculty study life at the molecular and cellular levels, such as the mechanisms of nuclear migration, or how the nervous system works. Others focus on tissues and organs, for example, the regulation of plant growth, or embryonic development. Still others explore the history of life on Earth, such as paleontology and genome evolution. And finally, many focus on questions about organismal interactions, such as bird vocalization. Let's take a moment to meet some of these faculty up close and personal. The World Health Organization has designated antibiotic resistance as one of the three leading um, human health challenges. And how we've transitioned from exploring bacteria in nature to solving, or potentially solving, antibiotic resistance is really just a matter of asking the bacteria, what do they do? How do they interact? And can we model that approach in um, the application of human medication? Watching live cells in action is an incredibly beautiful and mesmerizing process, and that's what we do in my lab. We study the fundamental process of cell division, or mitosis, and our approach to studying that is to use light microscopy, and this would be an example of the instrument that we use to do that. In an adult body, there's at least a million mitosis, that's cell division, a minute. So it's a very fundamental process that's going on all the time. It's really exciting to know that as a graduate student, just as a master's student, even my research here could have an effect on bigger, better things with cancer. The World Health Organization estimates that about two billion people have iron deficiency anemia. And so we study the processes in plants that get iron up out of the ground um, into the body of the plant. These are some corn plants here that you're looking at. And then eventually into the seeds of the plants, the part of the plant that people are going to eat. I'm a pre-med major, so I was really interested in the uh, biomedical implications of the research. And um, I really enjoyed my work so far because it's helped me apply what I've learned in class so far into it's a more practical approach to what I've learned in lecture. The spread of introduced species is a major problem in North America and worldwide and a major aspect of global change. My research is to try to understand what makes a brain. The brain is probably the most complex matter, two pounds of matter in the universe with trillions of connections. And here we have a simple vertebrate system that allows us to actually get at some of the molecular mechanisms that make a brain. And we have genetic tools that we can manipulate genes and see what happens. And hopefully this is actually informing us about human birth defects that affect the brain. The more we understand about how thyroid hormone acts in early development, the better we can uh, manage, clinically manage pregnant women and thyroid function. And so we know that 30% of women of reproductive age today are at risk for low thyroid hormone levels for a variety of reasons. Sound in the ocean is fundamentally different from sound on land. And so we go to the ocean to probe the physics and the biology of how animals communicate through the water, how they receive those signals, and how they use them to communicate with each other. We've, we've been studying these animals for a while now, and it's, it's really cool to see how different people are studying these animals in different ways and seeing how we can collaborate and find out exactly what, you know, how to solve the mystery of how these somatopods work. My laboratory studies the evolution of animal performance. Sprinting, jumping, biting, all of which are important for escaping predators, capturing prey, doing all the things that animals need to do to survive. So I'm a grad student here, I came from Taiwan because I've been really interested in what Duncan is doing in his lab. Duncan brought me into the big picture of the lab very quickly, like two weeks after I got here, I just finished collecting data. So I feel pretty, pretty good for my first year so far. We 
do a lot of field work with these animals where we go to the field, we watch them feed, we watch them, uh, we measure how hard they bite and looking at their bite forces. And what we're really trying to do is understand uh, the relationship between anatomy and behavior and mechanical function in the evolution of groups like this that are actually uh, really pretty diverse and pretty spectacular. From the study of microbial interactions to the structure and function of mammalian jaws, from questions of human health to those of plant biology, from genetics to the molecular mechanisms of cellular function, our researchers explore the breadth and depth of biology. They travel to places as exotic as the Galapagos Islands and the Great Barrier Reef, to the inner workings of the cell and plant succession in the biosphere. They generate over $6 million each year in research funds and publish in the leading journals in their fields. The department hosts over 70 graduate students who receive training through interdepartmental graduate programs. Our highly successful students pursue exciting careers in academic and industrial research. They engage in science education and outreach and join the faculty at some of our nation's premier universities. If you are an undergraduate looking for a lab to train in or are ready to pursue your graduate studies, visit our website and find the faculty and graduate programs that are right for you.